parametric versus non-parametric test. Let's start first with the parametric test. Parametric test is suited to data which are independently drawn from a normally distributed population or to a sufficiently large n whenever the normally assumption is not satisfied. In practice, independence of the sample values can be achieved by the process of randomization and the normality assumption by using sufficiently large sample size. For comparative studies, the parametric test is suitable when the different groups of scores are drawn from the population with equal variances. Lastly, the unit of measurement use is at least in an interval scale. So those are the different uh, assumptions that we have to satisfy in order for us to use a parametric test. But what if those assumptions are not satisfied or being violated? We have here the second one, the non-parametric test. Non-parametric tests are uniquely suited to the behavioral data, which often do uh, not assume that the scores are drawn from a population, following a certain distribution like the normality distribution. Secondly, Non-parametric tests are applicable to data which are generated by ranking, which are usually considered weak level of measurement. Thirdly, non-parametric tests are applicable to samples with small size because of their very nature like pilot study data or data from rare cases like mental illness or samples of cultures. We have here the different uh, tests that we can use. If we have one sample, we are going to use one sample test for parametric test and then one sample sign or one sample Wilcoxon for the non-parametric test. If you have two samples for dependent, we have paired t-test and then the side rank t-test for the non-parametric. For the two samples for independent, for parametric test, we have two sample t-test. For the non-parametric test, we have the man with me test. Then, we have the K sample, three or more samples. For the parametric test, we have one-way ANOVA. Then, the non-parametric test, we have the kruskal wallis test. So, this test can be solved using uh, an application called SPSS, which we are going to learn for the next lessons but as of now these are the least there are other parametric tests for this given samples and non-parametric tests also but they are not included in the SPSS so they are being computed manually one thing that we have to consider in our parametric and non-parametric tests is the different measurements so, this is the assignment of numerals to object or events according to rules. For example, we can assign the number 1 to 5 to 5 celebrities in order of beauty. 1 is the least beautiful and 5 is the most beautiful. We have here the four levels of measurements. The first one is the nominal measurement. Nominal measurement is consisting of, classif of classifying items or individuals into two or more categories. Its basic requirement is to assign an item to one and only one category and specify the criteria for placing individual into classes. So we have here the different examples for nominal measurement. The type of school, it's either public or private. The gender, male, female, lesbian, gay, bisexual. Marital status, married or not. Uh, widow and others. Then we have the comprehensive, the section, section A, B, or C. The list of students can be the names of the students also. It can be the hair color of the students or any person type of living, religious preference, type of house, or type of pet. These are just some examples for the nominal measurement. Next one is the ordinal measurement. 
For ordinalis measurement, it specifies the relative position of items or individuals with respect to a given characteristics with no indication as to the distance between the positions. The basic requirement is that we must be able to determine the order of position on a scale of the item in a group. Examples for the ordinal measurement, we have here the rank of students, can be rank 1 to rank 10, the satisfaction, the exam grade, the position in class, the order, the scale, the socioeconomic status, Likert scale, Likert scale is one of the basic things or the most commonly used in a research, then level of agreement, time of day, or the political orientation okay that is uh, for the ordinal measurement the third one is the interval measurement if we talk about interval measurement this possess the characteristics of an ordinal scale and in addition the distances between any two numbers on the scale are of known size so measures with order and establishes numerically equal distances on the scale. So example of this is the scores obtained in IQ or aptitude test. The temperature in degree, it's either in Fahrenheit or Celsius. The score and then the CGPA or the scores of a given student in a certain exam. That would be for the interval measurement. Then the last one we have what we call as the ratio measurement. We have what we call as the ratio measurement. A ratio scale has all the characteristics of an interval scale and addition has a true zero point as its origin. So number on a ratio scale indicates the actual amount of the characteristics being measured. Examples of this, we have the number of correct items on a test. The age in years, the age, the height, maybe the weight, the percentage, the grant, the time, sales figure, income earned in a week, years of education, or the number of children. So these are just some of the examples for the ratio measurement. And as a summary, we have here the different measurement. For the scale nominal, numbers assigned to runner, runner 7, runner 8, runner Three, then the finish area then ordinal rank order of winner we have the third place the second place and the first place so uh, runner 8 can be first place runner 7 can be second place runner 3 can be third place or the other way around then we have the interval performance rating on a 0 to 10 scale so 8.2 performance 9.1 9.6 then the ratio time to finish in we have 15.2 14.1 13.4 that would be for the measurement